Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to watch my presentation. Today, I will talk about how to pump Adobe Reader multiple times with malformed strips. First of all, please allow me to introduce myself briefly. My name is Ke Liu. I'm a security researcher from Tencent Security Xiong Lab. I have found and reported more than 400 vulnerabilities in products of Adobe, Apple, Google, Microsoft, and some other companies. I am one of the nominees of the Pony Awards in 2017. I'm in MSRC Top 100 list from 2016 to 2018, and I pawned Adobe Reader twice at the 10th Cup. Also, I shared some of my researches in some security conferences. This is the agenda of the presentation. I will talk about the topic from five parts, including basic concepts, Acrobat JavaScript, root cause analysis, case studies, and the lessons learned. First, let's talk about some basic concept. It is known to all that strings can be divided into two categories on Windows, the NC strings and the Unicode strings. For NC strings, each character is encoded as an 8-bit value. We can define a chart type array in C language to store the string data. The string terminator is a one bit null character. For Unicode strings, each character is encoded as a 16-bit value. We can define a wet chart type array in C language to store the string data. The string terminator is a two bit null character. For Unicode strings, the characters can be encoded in two forms little ending and big ending. We can specify the batch order in the character set name. LE indicates the batch order is little ending, and BE indicates the batch order is big ending. The batch order will be platform specific if we did not specify it in the character set name explicitly. However, we can specify it by using the batch order mark character. The batch order mark is the UTF-16 character FEFF. The batch order of itself specifies the batch order of the data stream. It will always at the beginning of a data stream. There is a simple example to illustrate how the batch order mark works. There are two characters, and the values of them are 4E, 2D, and 6587. In little ending format, the data stream will be FF, FE, 2D, 4E, 8765. And in big ending format, the data stream will be FEFF, 4E, 2D, 6587. Now we will talk about the string handling functions. The first one is the traditional version. I think you all are very familiar with these functions. And it is known to all that these functions are vulnerable to buffer overflow attacks. There is another version of string handling functions, which are also vulnerable to buffer overflow attacks. Some people may think that this is a security enhanced version of the traditional functions, but it is not. For example, function string n copy was not designed to be a safer version of a function string copy. If the length of the source string 
is equal or greater than the number of characters to be processed, no null character will be appended at the end of the destination string. These functions are the security enhanced ones. They are implemented by Microsoft and might, on, might be only available on Windows. The invalid parameter handler will be called if the operation failed. As we can see in the box, these functions have more parameters. The second parameter specifies the size of the destination buffer. It will be used to make sure that the destination buffer will not be overflowed. However, the security enhanced string handling functions are not guaranteed to be secure if they are used incorrectly. In the following example, we are trying to copy data from the source string to the destination string. We passed 0x7fff to the second parameter, which is much greater than the actual buffer size. Usage like this, we are need to buffer overflow. The security enhanced function will just act like the traditional string copy function. Now let's talk about JavaScript in Adobe Acrobat Reader. There is a file named isscript.api in the plugin folder of Adobe Acrobat Reader DC. It's the JavaScript engine, which was developed based on SpiderMonkey version 24.2. You can download the source code of this version of SpiderMonkey from Mozilla's FTP server. Also, you can download a document called JavaScript for Acrobat API Reference from Adobe's website. This file documented almost all JavaScript objects designed by Adobe. In the following slides, I will talk about the layout of the JavaScript object in Adobe Reader. Here, we defined an array, and the first element is a field object. The field object was created by calling the Acrobat JavaScript API at field. The second element is a flag value, which will be used to locate the array object in memory. We can search the flag value in WinDebug and we'll find the array element. Here, each element is a JS value object. For each element, the first four bytes represent the value. The second four bytes represent the type. Here, FFFFFF81 is the type value for 32 bit integer. And FFFFFF87 is the type value for object. The second element of the array is a JS object in Spider Monkey. There is a pointer in the JS object which points to the Acrobat JavaScript object. We call it ES object. The ES object is allocated on system heap. The size of the ES object is 0x48 bytes. Also, there is a pointer in the ES object which points back to the JS object. What we are interested in is the pointer that points to the private property hash table. The size of the private property hash table is 0x80 bytes. The first 0x40 bytes stores the condition array objects. The second 0x40 bytes stores the corresponding array length values. For example, 
the array in pink corner has two elements. Each element is a pair of name and value. Here, the first element named widget and its value is zero. The field ES object has a private property also named field. The field property has a virtual function table pointer. The size of the field property depends on the type of the field object. Here, the size is 0x60 bytes for text field. The XFA object has a private property named XFA object implementation. The XFA object implementation property also has a virtual function table pointer. The size of the XFA object implementation property depends on the type of the XFA object. Here, the size is 0x5 C bytes for the data value XFA object. The last object we are discuss is the array buffer object in JavaScript. This is an exploit-friendly JavaScript object. It can be used to do heap functionality. It supports read and write battery data, and it can be used to exploit out-of-bounds write vulnerabilities. Here, we defend an array buffer object. The backing store will be allocated on system heap if the bat length is greater than 0x68. In this case, the bat length is 0x70, and the backing store was allocated on system heap. If we can overwrite the bat length value to 8f, then we can turn it into an arbitrary address read and write primitive and achieve code execution. Before diving into the details of the vulnerabilities, let's talk about the root causes of them. Adobe Reader implemented some security enhanced string handling functions. We can search the string underscore safe to locate the functions in IDA. This table shows the details of these functions. There are two versions of functions, one to handle NC strings, the other to handle Unicode strings. And there are also some generic functions, which will check the strings type and redirect the request to the corresponding function. Here, we take string and length safe as an example to illustrate how the generic functions work. The function checks the string's type according to the first two bytes of the string. The string will be recognized as a Unicode string if the first byte is FE, and the second byte is FF. Otherwise, it will be recognized as an async stream. Actually, FE, FF are the bytes of the byte order mark in Big 18 format. The request will be redirected to the functions according to the strings type. So what's the problems here? There are two flaws. The first one is that the functions are used incorrectly. As we can see here, the value of the second parameter was set to 0x7fffffff in most cases. As discussed earlier, this will lead to security problems. The second flaw is that checking string types according to the batch order mark is insufficient. A type confusion can be triggered easily when checking the string types. Here we have a string and the first two bytes are FE and FF. 
Obviously, this is an NC stream, and the stream terminator is a one byte null character. However, Adobe Reader will treat it as a Unicode stream since the first two bytes are FE and FF. Now it's clear how to trigger the vulnerability. We can pass a malformed async stream to the Unicode string handling functions. Because the terminator for anything string is a one byte null character, and the terminator for Unicode stream is a two byte null character. If an async stream was handled by the Unicode string handling functions, after bounds access can be triggered since the Unicode string terminator cannot be found. Finally, it's time to talk about the vulnerabilities. Here I will talk about four exploitable vulnerabilities. The first one is an out-of-bound read vulnerability, which could lead to information disclosure. The second one is an out-of-bound read and write vulnerability, which could lead to code execution. The third one is also an out-of-bound read vulnerability, and the code need to information disclosure. The last one is a use after free vulnerability and the code need to code execution. The first vulnerability is CVE 2019-7032. The proof of concept code is very simple. Just two lines of JavaScript code can trigger the vulnerability. First, we call the add field method of the document object to create a field object. Then we assign string feff to the username property of the field object. Adobe Reader will crash when opening a PDF file that contains those two lines of JavaScript code. The process crashed when handling the property string feff in the Unicode string handling function string length safe. As we can see here, there is only one null byte at the end of the heap buffer. The process crashed because the Unicode string terminator cannot be found. Except the previously mentioned proof of concept code that can trigger the vulnerability, I found that there were 18 possible combinations to trigger the vulnerability. The underlying root causes of them are the same. As the table shows, we can use other types of field objects and other properties to trigger the vulnerability. The root cause of this vulnerability is also very simple. Let's review the code line by line. Here, we can fully control the content of the source string, and we set it to FEFF. Please note that it's an anything stream. Handling it with function string and length safe, we are need to out of bounds read because the string will be handled by the Unicode string handling function. The length value returned will be longer than expected. Then a heap buffer will be created according to the calculated length value. And the memory copy function will be called to copy data from the source string to the destination string which will need to information disclosure. We can read the nicked data via the username property of the field object in JavaScript code. The way to exploit the vulnerability is very straightforward. We can put an object with a virtual function table pointer behind the source stream. Then we can read the pointer by triggering the vulnerability. The pointer will be used to calculate the base address of the module. 
Here are the exploiting steps. First, we will spray lots of objects which have a virtual function table pointer. Then we free half of the spread objects to make some memory holes. Finally, we try to trigger the vulnerability to nick the virtual function table pointer of one of the spread objects. Some exploiting tricks. As discussed earlier, field and XFA objects have virtual function table pointer. Here I choose the XFA objects because I have another XFA use after free vulnerability so that I can use them together to achieve code execution. Unfortunately, the add field method of the document object will not be allowed to be called in XFA mode. A lot allowed error exception will be thrown if it was being called. Here comes another trick. Although we cannot create a field object dynamically, we can define ones statically. This piece of PDF code defines a text field object named my field one. We can manipulate the field object in the callback function of an initialized event. First, we can access the document object through the target property of the event object. Then we can access the field object by calling the gate field method of the document object. Now we can trigger the vulnerability and leak some information. The patch for this vulnerability is also very simple. Adobe put three extra null bytes at the end of the source stream. Now there are four null bytes in total, and it will stop the out of bounds read behavior in the Unicode string handling function string and length safe. Although not perfect, it works as expected. Now we are talk about the second vulnerability, CVE 2019, 8199. It's an out-of-bound read and write vulnerability and code need to code execution. It's exploitable in Adobe Acrobat Reader DC 2019-010-299 and earlier versions. We can use just one line of JavaScript code to trigger the vulnerability. We can call the unregister review method or call the unregister approval method of the collab object and pass a malformed ANSI string to trigger the vulnerability. The process crashed when handling the parameter stream FEFF in the Unicode string handling function string copy safe. As we can see here, there is only one null batch at the end of the heap buffer. The process crashed because the Unicode string terminator cannot be found. The root cause of the vulnerability was the same as the previous one. Handling malformed ANSI strings with the Unicode string handling functions. Let's review the code line by line. First, we can fully control the content of the source stream. It was handled with the ANSI string handling function. Then, a heap buffer was allocated according to the calculated length value. So far, so good. However, the string copy operation was performed by calling the generic function string copy save, which would trigger the vulnerability. This function will redirect the request to the Unicode string handling function because the source string starts with bytes FE and FF. 
after font read and write can be triggered since the Unicode string terminator cannot be found. The exploiting steps. First, we spray lots of strings and array buffer objects to occupy the memory. Here, we create five objects as a unit each time. Then, we free the first and third array buffer objects in each unit to create lots of memory cores. When triggering the vulnerability, we can make the source string get allocated in the first hole and the destination string get allocated in the second hole. Then we can override the fourth array buffer spec length to 0x FFFF. The content of the string, the second object in each unit, will be used to override the bad names and stop the copy operation once we achieved our goal. Then we can override the fifth array buffer spec names to 0x 8f to gain the global read and write primitive. You may wonder why not override a rebuffer spec names to 0x directly? That's because the string copy function will write a string terminator when finished copying. The terminator may corrupt the view pointer associated with the array buffer object. The process will crash if the view pointer is an invalid value. As a result, the maximum value for the first array buffer spec names can only be 0x FFFF. But that's not enough for us to override the fifth array buffer spec names to 0x 8f. And now we will gain the ability to read and write globally. We still have something to do here. Although we can read and write globally, we cannot read and write at absolute memory address because a rebuffer doesn't have such ability. To achieve this goal, we need to figure out the absolute memory address of the array buffer's backing store. The backing store is the buffer which is used to store the binary data of the array buffer. On Windows, we can search backward to find some values, such as 0x FFEE FFEE and 0x F0 E0 D0 C0. There are some values around them that can be used to calculate the absolute memory address of the heap buffer. Here, the values in red color are the ones that we are looking for. For this vulnerability, the first patch was deployed silently. Adobe put two extra null bytes at the end of the source stream, and now there are three null bytes in total. This will make function string copy safe, stop copying data too earlier, and we can only overwrite one or two null bytes because the destination buffer is not big enough to store the Unicode string terminator. We can still crash the process, but we cannot exploit the vulnerability anymore. The vulnerability was finally fixed by another patch. When calculating the length of the source string, Adobe used the generic function string and length safe instead of using the anything string handling function and allocated two extra bytes of memory to store the string terminator. Now the destination buffer is big enough 
to store the string data, including the string terminator. The third vulnerability is CVE 2020-3804. It's an out-of-bounds read vulnerability, which could lead to information disclosure. To trigger the vulnerability, we will define a getter function for the type property of the event object. A malformed ancient stream will be returned by the getter function. Then we will trigger a JavaScript exception to be thrown from an Acrobat JavaScript API. This can be done in a lot of ways. Here, we passed another malformed stream to the print line method of the console object. As, as discussed earlier, the bad order mark FEFF can only be put at the beginning of a data stream. In this case, it's put in the middle of the stream and will be rejected and a JavaScript exception will be thrown. The vulnerability will be triggered when constructing the JavaScript exception object. The process crashed when handling the malformed ancient string in the Unicode string handling function string length safe. This vulnerability is a little different from the previous ones. Here, the hip buffer size is 0x40 bytes. The first half part of the hip buffer was some ancient streams. The second half part of the hip buffer was uninitialized. The process crashed because the content was processed by the Unicode string handling function and the Unicode string terminator cannot be found. The event object will be accessed when constructing the error object. Let's review the code line by line. First, we will define a string object to store the generated content. We will check if the type property of the event object is defined or not. Since we defined a getter function for it, the malformed ancient string will be copied to the file name string object. Then we will check if the target name property of the event object is defined or not, and we will append it to the string object if it's defined. The name property of the event object will also be processed in the same way. Now, the content of the file name stream will be copied to the file name property of the error object, which will trigger the vulnerability. One thing we should know about is that the stream will be adjusted dynamically in function string copy and string append. The initial size of the hip buffer was 0x20 bytes. And the hip buffer was initialized by filling with zeros. If the hip buffer was too small to store the content, then its size will be doubled. A new hip buffer will be allocated by calling function reallocate. Re sorry, reallocate. If the hip buffer returned by reallocate is larger than the original hip buffer the new space will not be initialized. This explains why the second half part of the hip buffer was initialized when the process crashed. Now it's very easy to understand the vulnerability model. Here, the source stream was a malformed ancient stream. Out-of-bounds read can be triggered 
when the strain was processed by the Yolikul strain hardening function, strain enhance safe. Information disclosure can be triggered when calling the swap function. The leaked information can be accessed via the file name property of the error object in JavaScript code. The way to exploit the vulnerability looks pretty much the same as CVE 2019 7032. We can put an object with virtual function table pointer behind the source stream. The only requirement is that the size of the object must be 0x40 bytes, 0x80 bytes, or 0x100 bytes, or some other values. We can calculate the module's base address via the nicked pointer. It's not hard to find an object that meets the requirement. Here, I used the content every XFA object to exploit the vulnerability. The patch for this vulnerability is very simple. Here is the patch code. We will create another heap buffer with which is not, not enough to store the string's content. And the heap buffer will be initialized. The generated content will be copied to the newly created heap buffer by calling function string and copy. Now it works as expected since there are enough null bytes at the end of the heap buffer. The last vulnerability is CVE 2020-3805. This is a use of the free vulnerability and code need to code execution. Let's review the proof of concept code nine by nine. First, we defined a malformed ancient stream, which will be used as the name of the field object. Then we call the add field method to create a field object. And later we call the add field method again. The field object will be marked as dead this time. Now we can trigger the vulnerability by accessing the field object. We can call the reset form method of the document object to trigger the crash. The process crashed due to use of the free. As we can see here, the heap buffer we are trying to access has been free. As discussed earlier, the field object has a private property also named field. The private property field will be freed when a field object was marked as dead. Here we are not going to talk about why the field object was marked as dead. We will focus on how to exploit the vulnerability. So we created a field object by calling the add field method. And the private property hash table was associated with the field object. There was a property also named field. And the property pointed to a heap buffer. That's the field property object. When the field ES object was marked as dead, a property named dead will be added to the property hash table. And the field property object will be freed. It's not difficult to control the EIP register by exploiting this vulnerability, but that's not what we are interested in. Here, a generic method for exploiting such kind of use of the free vulnerabilities 
about field objects will be discussed in detail. The method was first disclosed by PTDY from Star Labs. He shared his method in the exploit code for CVE 2019-8039. Although this method only works in Adobe Acrobat Reader DC 2019-012-240 and, and earlier versions, it can help us achieve code execution by exploiting the use of the free vulnerability itself. To exploit the vulnerability, we will trigger it in the set function of the calculation order index property. Let's review the code line by line. First, we created the field object F1 with a malformed name stream, and we set the calculate action for it. Then we created a normal field object F2 and set the calculate action for it. Then we created the value object and we added the value of method for it. The value of method will be called when the object was being accessed. In other words, the field object F1 will be destroyed during assigning the calculation order index property. That's very classic use of the free trick. To make the calculation order index property work, a string array was used to store the names of the field objects. The names index specifies the calculation order of the field object. If any of the field objects calculation order has changed, the array should be adjusted to maintain the right calculation orders. Now let's figure out what happened in the setter function of the calculation order index property. First, we can get a pointer that points to the array by accessing the field property object. We can also get the name of the current field object. We can get the current calculation order of the field object by searching the name in the array. Then we try to get the primitive value of the assigned JavaScript object. During this process, the value of method of the JavaScript object will be called, and the field property object will be free. If the calculation order has changed, the <coughs> sorry, the array should also be rearranged accordingly. So, what can we do in this function? First. We will get the name stream pointer from the field object. Then we will calculate the names of the stream, create a heap buffer, and copy the name stream to it. The original name stream was a CE string object. The code on the left side shows its structure. As we can see here, it has a member which was used to store the length value. In other words, we can construct a C string object and make the length value smaller than the actual string length. We can trigger out of bounds right when calling the string copy save function, since the destination heap buffer is too small to store the content of the source stream. The exploiting steps. We can control the content of the field object when triggering the vulnerability such that the content of the heap buffer can be fully controlled. And we can construct a fixed C string object. 
in the fake C string object, the actual string length is greater than the value of the length member. As a result, we can trigger after funds write when calling the string copy function. We can put an array buffer object behind the destination stream and overwrite the bat length to 0x8 if. Then we will get a global read and write primitive. Since we did not analyze the root cause of the vulnerability, we will not talk about how the vulnerability was patched. However, we will talk about how the exploit method was mitigated. In newer versions of Adobe Reader, a flag named knock field property was added to prevent the field object to be destroyed in properties setter functions. If the flag value was set to one, the field object cannot be destroyed. The following code shows how it works. The flag value was set to one when entering the setter function and the flag value will be cleared when leaving the setter function. Now let's talk about the lessons we have learned. On one hand, the flaws should be eliminated as early as possible. It would be best if we could eliminate them at design phase. If not, we should consider refactor the legacy code when it's necessary. For example, we can distinguish NC strings and Unicode strings more carefully. Or we can always use Unicode strings and convert the Unicode strings to NC strings only when it is necessary. Compared with adding no bytes, it's not an easy job to refactor the legacy code. On the other hand, it's necessary to do some secure development trainings for the developers. We should use the functions correctly and should never use 0x7 with 7f for parameter maximum bytes. Okay, that's all of my presentation. Thank you all for listening. And now it's QA time. Please feel free to ask any questions about this talk. You can also contact me on Twitter if you have any other questions later. Thank you. Thank you, Kay. Um, unfortunately, it seems that you, your topic was entirely clear to people because we do not have any questions at this time. Okay. <laughs> um, so, um, I think the only thing that remains then is for me to say thank you very much again for this great explanation of the topic.